Hi, Vincent Hall, and welcome to another episode of Anyone Can Draw, Paint, and Create. Today, as promised, we're going into our third of the Ages, frottage, F-R-O-T-T-A-G-E. It's basically a French word that means rubbings, and Max Ernst, part of the early Surrealist movement, was one of the pioneers in the art world to use frottage in his drawings and paintings, which we'll see later on in the slideshow. But what is frottage? Well, if you've ever tried to write or draw on a table that had a crack or a bump or someone left a blob of whatever dried thing might be on there, paint maybe, you've probably experienced the bad side of frottage where you got an unwanted dent or bump into your artwork. Today we're going to intentionally do these different textural things so that we can create a drawing. Probably as a child, you may have experienced the fun of trying to create something for a pastime by rubbing over the other object, maybe a coin, for example. So if I took a coin and I did a rubbing, I will see exactly what's on the coin. A lot of people go around and look at monuments or different other things that might have words on them and do rubbings as a preservation of that monuments words so that they can have it for when they go back home. It's an easy way to get a souvenir of something. So I'm going to demonstrate just a few objects and then we're going to talk about how do you take these objects and create an actual artwork from them because it's going to take some incorporation. Just doing rubbings of a quarter all over a page might make an interesting pattern but we want to try to do something a little more recognizable as an art form. So let's get started. In its simplest form, frittage is basically, like I said, taking the quarter or whatever money piece just to see how it works and doing a rubbing over it. And we should start to see the image of what's on the quarter by going around the edge. And there we have it. Now, the darker the pencil, the less detail I'm going to get. So you actually might want to use a lighter lead pencil. Maybe this one is an 8B, it's very soft. So let's see what the same image does with a harder pencil. Okay, so here's an 8H, the exact opposite of our 8B. And if we take this pencil and rub it across, Oh, that's not gonna work. So frottage in its simplest form is basically taking an object like the proverbial quarter here and lightly doing a rubbing across it so I'll start to see some of the detail in the texture. My quarter's a little worn out, but you can see I'm getting some of the basic shapes and it's a little hard to color over this, but you'll start to see the circle come through on the coin. There we go. So if I hold this up, hopefully you can see a little bit of the circle on the coin. Better objects are things like this, just as a piece of the um, garbage bag box that I was tearing off and it has a serrated edge. So before you start your project, just experiment with what you have around the house. Now this one's fun because it creates a really cool, interesting edge by coloring up to it, letting my pencil go over some and under some, and you might be thinking, well, what's this? But imagine, if you will, that this is the edge of maybe grasses or um, a landscape with things growing behind it. And I've got the perfect area here for growth vegetation in the background. I also found an old Lego piece. Now, I don't suggest everyone has Legos lying around the house, but anything that has bumps and textures on the back, it could be a screen, a sieve, if I go over it, oh, this one's really fun. You can see here how quickly I got a really nice texture on this. And I can flip it over to the other side. I'll just continue along. This is Legos part A and part B. Now, what could I do with these textures? Maybe I'm doing a building or I'm doing some kind of other cityscape where I want to show these outlines and textures um, for whatever building wall or side of a building that I might want to show. 
So something simple lying around the house, and again, you might not have a Lego, but you probably have some kind of a placemat, that could give you a similar kind of bumpy texture. And those are a lot of fun for creating, um, building concrete, bricks, any kind of patterned architecture concern. Let's see what a placemat might do. So here I have a rather cheap, bumpy placemat, and I'm just going to color over it. Oh yeah, this works great. So what I've done here is build up an entire repetition of different textures that again could work inside, outside, you name it. It's really fun. You could also, if you wanted to, cut out some of these and use them in a collage, which if we went back to our first lesson in the ages, that's what we were doing. Very popular in the late 19th century, early 20th century was taking lace and doilies. Now we're gonna see more of this when we do grottage because this is popular with painters on how to get lace. But I found one of my grandmother's old um, crocheted place mat airy thing. So I'm just going to take this over the area here. And this is going to be more subtle but I will start to get some of these flower shapes that she, oh, this thing is a little long, <laughs> but I'm going to start to get some of the bumps of the lace. Maybe I'll move the paper right here to go over this part where it's a little more pronounced. It's just a little hard to see when you go over the tiny little details. But lace is going to give you another texture. You could go over little seashells or whatever you might like. I like these because they're very organic and I could use them in a variety of ways. Max Ernst did things like this with lace and did them to create trees. So you might look at that and go, well, I don't see a tree. But if you overlaid enough of these textures, you would start to build up that kind of soft leafy look to a tree. Speaking of leaves, that's why it looks like I just did a yard sweep and came into it. Leaves are some of the most interesting shapes because not only will you get the shape of the leaf, but you'll get the outline and all the veins as well. And leaves are probably one of my favorite things to do with this. And that's going to lead us to where we're going to go on our project of doing the frittage as an art form. I always like this because it's kind of watching magic happen in a way, if you will. And the stems of the leaf are just as much fun as the veins of the leaf. And there's our leaf, and that's where we're headed. So don't leaf. We'll be right back. So now that you've got a sense of what frittage is, and we can see all these little textural differences, what are we going to draw? I decided I was just going to do some sort of a fall um, still life in a way, just like found objects. So I amassed a bunch of leaves just on a quick walk out front. Now, maybe you don't have leaves lying around, although at this time they're almost everywhere falling off the trees. But you could find um, silk leaves or silk flower and maybe use that too. So whatever you have, let's just give it a try. I also decided to bring in some very thin sticks so that I could use these as um, a vehicle for making leaves look like they're coming off the tree. And to make the leaves a little more colorful, because it is fall, I'm going to use colored pencil instead of my graphite, but you're welcome to do graphite pencil. The last part is, this is one part of art where thinner is better. So we're going to be using computer paper instead of some fancy drawing paper. So this works out extremely well if you just have nothing more than a sheet of computer paper lying around the house. The thinner the paper, the more likely you're going to get the detail of the rubbing or the frittage. And that's what we're going for, that detail. So let's see what we can do with this. Well, I have my stick and that's where I'm going to start. Now remember, when you do this rubbing, you're going to wind up with the outline of what you're doing rather, so you're gonna to have to color along the outside edge just to get this darker area. So this is going to have a background tone, just
just by virtue of the fact that we're doing this rubbing. And this is akin to when you have something on the table that you really didn't want there. But again, this is the beauty of this is the unexpected nature of what a frittage drawing can be. And I might add, of course, you can always go back into it and draw freehand to add areas that you want. So I'm going to do one with the stick here where I'm coloring it in. There we go. So you see there's this whole background area. Well, what I can do is then softly color this whole thing in. So I almost have like a, a little light background of all things brown if I wanted brown, or I could do whatever color. Or, and I'll do another one here just to show you. So we have the two different ones. I think I'll come this way. I'm just going to look at the um, stick as a inspiration, if you will and just kind of draw a stick myself. So two ways to do it. If you really want to do all frittage, then of course do this way. I kind of prefer a modified one. So I'm just gonna draw a few lines where I want my leaves to go. Now, if we do this one, it might help to further blend this background and we'll talk about that. But let's get started on some leaves. So I've amassed a couple of different colors that I want to use, some reds, oranges, some greens, and even some blue because when you look in some of these really pretty leaves, look at this one, there's some browns, but we can always take orange and blue to make some of these darker orange colors as well. So I'm going to use the leaf to get the rubbing, but then I'm also gonna use the leaf as inspiration for the colors. So I will turn my leaf upside down, figure out where I want this leaf on the page. Let's see, I'm gonna to try to line it up a little bit with my stem, but we'll see how far that goes. I'm gonna let some of it go off the page as well. Then I'm gonna hold this down and do my leaf rubbing and start to ease up as maybe you think you're getting to the edge of the page a little bit. I mean, or not, it's up to you. And the key is holding this paper down. So if you have trouble holding the paper down, I would suggest getting some tape just to tape the object to your paper. And going along like this, there we go. So I've got some sense of where my leaf is. Now I can go back in and further draw in the texture of that leaf where I see it going right off the page here so that I get a sense of where that leaf is. Now there's a couple of things we can do. We can take an eraser and get lighten up some of these areas that might have gotten a little too dark. And you can also erase out, just show you here. There we go. You get rid of some of the areas where you didn't want the colors as well. So I will do this one by erasing out the parts that I don't want, but it's nice to have that little ghosty area. It sort of integrates your foreground with your background. Then I can go back and look at my leaf and start to get some of the different tones and actually turn this into an interesting leaf drawing. So I'm gonna take some of my different colors. This is close to what we would have done had we been just drawing the leaf, but follow the lines that you already created with the frittage and give this leaf a little extra oomph by showing some of the vein structures. I can even go around the edge of the leaf with some different colors. And I think I'll switch to some red so you can really see this and start to color this in. And I'm gonna work on this away from the screen for a minute so that you can get caught up with what you wanna do too. But you can see, we're gonna start actually drawing in these leaves and create a whole series of leaves by doing rubbings and going back and forth. I'll give you a chance to get started and let's see where I go with the progression of this. So I spent a little time and did a second leaf, this time using only yellow. And on this side, I decided to go more monochromatic and just keep it all in browns because it's a really soft, almost impressionistic look of the leaf. And for that, I actually use the softer side of the leaf, not the veiny underside to create this, but I'm gonna use the exact same leaf underneath to create two views of one leaf. So I'll show you that, and then we'll look at what we can do with this yellow leaf and see where it takes us. 
So here's the same leaf that I traced here and we have a nice soft brown background. So I'm going to go to the underside where it's a little more veiny to get a more pronounced leaf over here. And I'm kind of lining up my stem with where I see this leaf going. And again, this is my monochromatic side, which means I'm using one colored pencil. This is how you could easily just use plain old graphite, just a drawing pencil or a regular pencil you have lying around the house to simply get a softer edge. And you can see how beautifully these veins are coming out, but it's a much, um, much less obvious look because again, we're shading in our background. There's that little stem that I wanted to see. And I'm trying to integrate these two so that I get this whole idea of fall leaves in a variety of formats. Sorry, my hand gets in the way here because I'm trying to hold down the leaf. I think I should have taken my own advice and maybe used um, tape, but we've got it. So now we've got a nice soft leaf here too. I brought some different leaves. This is from a sage plant that I had outside and it's very soft. So I'm just gonna see what this one does and I might use it for the next example I'm gonna show you because I think we're getting the sense of this. But this will give us just a different look. And it's nice to have different leaves. There we go, we got this nice edge of that sage. But the softer the leaf, the softer the edges are going to be. And that can give you a whole different look. Oh, I really like this one. This is definitely where I'm gonna be going for the other project. Cause I wanna show you something in the style of Max Ernst, where he created interesting landscapes doing some of these. And you can consider overlapping your shapes. You don't have to use leaves. Again, if all you, know, you have are some coins, we'll see what you can do with that. Or maybe a placemat or something. The key is, you know, try to experiment and see what works best for you. I happen to find mostly these, I guess they're maple leaves outside, so I have a lot of these. And I'll just do one more, kind of coming off the edge down here to, um, to mimic the same colors, but I'm gonna go green. We'll try something completely opposite. Push this in here and do the rubbing. It's nice to do different colors. You could go back to the lesson that we did a few weeks ago on primary colors or complementary colors or analogous colors, secondary colors, you name it. So whatever you wanna turn this into to make it a little more interesting for you, by all means do it. I really like when the shapes overlap. It creates some really fun textures, right where this leaf goes off the edge here and it's going up into this leaf which is kind of fun because it starts to look like one shape overlapping the other. And right where those edges are, I'm pressing a little harder so that we can really see the texture of these. And I'm purposefully skipping this because I decided I liked that shape that it was creating. There we go. Let's get a little bit more of this edge on this leaf and I think we're at the edge of it there. It's coming up into here. And there we go with that. So once we have these planned in, I am not by all means finished. I'm gonna take my complementary colors. So where I did see a darker red by taking a green over this sage leaf, I can go back in and at certain parts, add dynamic range as we call it by making certain parts darker this leaf I'm going to say is behind this little brown leaf here. So I'm just gonna go darker in here and use my blending tool. Here, I'm gonna use my green to further outline the edge of this leaf over that by following the little points on the leaf. So you don't have to just you know go with the rubbing and then, oh, I'm done. And then maybe you're not too happy with what you have, but you have to be stuck with it. Never ever in art do you have to say, this is all I can do. You can always go back in and add more. So I'm gonna take some red into my green leaf just to kind of unify this a little bit because pretty much this is a warm toned drawing. And again, this almost has that same montage look of the project we just did last week. Going back in here, I can just follow along my edges 
if I want to give some of them. Now, don't press the same all the way around. See, I'm just kind of moving my hand, getting some light, some dark, where I feel like I need to re-emphasize that it's a leaf. And then over here, this really soft kind of murky area, I'm going back in and I want to work my background more on this. I'm going to just give this leaf a little more emphasis where I see it, but not too much because these leaves were supposed to be my soft sort of background type leaf. And then using our blending tool or your Q-tip or whatever you have around the house, I'm only blending in the background part. Now, if I really wanted to unify this whole piece, I could go back in and, um, you know, make the whole paper maybe a different tone, and that works too. For example, right here, I feel like it's maybe too empty. I might just add this really soft orange in the background just to give it a little bit of flair. So you can keep going with it. And right here, I'm gonna emphasize this. So you are drawing. This isn't cheating drawing. Like some people, might be, oh, if you were drawing a leaf, just draw a leaf. Well, yeah, but we're trying to find some other avenues to getting texture or interest into our drawings. And the whole point is to make people look at things and wonder, oh, how did they do that? And that makes people look at your work longer. And the key is, as my professors used to always say, break the three second cycle. The three second cycle is if you're walking through a museum, you probably give every piece about three seconds before you decide whether you wanna look at it further or not. So what we're trying to do is make our artwork break that cycle so that the viewer, and the viewer might just be you, are more interested in it and wanna see what's going on. So that's kind of fun. Then you can go back in if you decide some things are too, too dark. Use your eraser as your drawing tool to erase out. Maybe soften these lines a little bit. And we pretty much have our cornucopia of leaf frittage. One more thing we're gonna try is a Max Ernst landscape. When I was doing the sage leaf, here it is, I realized this looks an awful lot like maybe um, cypress trees or um, something else that might be really fun in the background. So I'm going to show you for one last idea boost what you can do besides doing the obvious, which is just a leaf drawing. And these are fun. And you could do all different kinds of things. But to use this as just a vehicle for something where you're doing a lot of the drawing on your own. So in the true fashion of Max Ernst, we're going to create a whole landscape, but I'm just gonna use this lone sage leaf. Now I just wanna show you as an example what we're going to do. We're putting the leaf down and we're gonna lightly go across the leaf by coloring over it, but we wanna keep our pencil very low to the surface so it's almost parallel. I'm almost going exactly parallel to the paper and really rubbing right across the top because my focus is on turning this leaf, this sage leaf into a series of tree trunks. And you could do brown if you want. I wanna do greens and blues to kind of make this a little more moody and a la Max Ernst, a little more um, surrealistic. But by virtue of overlapping these, we can start to create an entire little forest of sage leaves that are going to actually become trees with my background. And the beauty of this project is we're gonna be doing a lot of drawing back into this to create something that we might find visually appealing and just keep going with overlapping some of these. You can see, don't stagger them exactly the same. I'm gonna move this one up a little bit. So I have one kind of going up higher than the others. And we're kind of creating our own little imaginary forest without having to worry about how do I draw those beautiful little edges that might be seen on trees but are too delicate to try to draw. You can also switch colors. So I'm going to add some blue because as we all know, cool colors recede and lighter colors come forward. So I'm just gonna add a little tilt here so that we can get some variation on this tree, which is really a sage leaf, and just kind of continue the process wherever you wanna go with this. You can switch colors out if you wanted to create a fall scene 
For example, we could go back in with some of these different colors and try to create a whole entire forest. But I have one that I started that I wanna show you how we can get to the finished product. So on this one, I already created most of my background for my landscape, a la Max Ernst, and I'm just adding a few layers of blue because I'm going to do a blue sky here, but I wanna have my um, leaf slash trees show up with some different textures and just kind of create some dark branches of some other trees behind the ones that I already have. So I'm just kind of moving this around and getting the top part so that some of these look like they're behind the other tree and just ever so lightly going through. So once we have my imaginary forest figured out, I'm going to continue this blue color and just shade in the rest of the sky. And to get a nice soft background here, I'm just gonna get a pad now of some thicker paper so that I'm able to recreate this nice soft look behind here. And I'll just continue to fill this in with the sky. I don't think anybody wants to watch me paint or draw in the sky rather. It's gonna to start to look a lot like watching paint dry, but I'll just show you where I'm headed. So this is all gonna be a dark evening sky. The key is, what do we do with this area down here, which kind of already has a bit of a landscapey look? And I'm going to create um, an edge of a forest, but we don't have to do any more frittage. Again, frittage is just a vehicle. So maybe down here, I'm trying to decide what I wanna do. I'm gonna go with my darker green and kind of further emphasize this as maybe some other little grasses that might be growing in here and do kind of what we did before by drawing grass. And since this has more of a night kind of evening sky, I'm not gonna have a lot of detail in my foreground, but I'm creating texture by going along with it. And this is kind of what Ernst did he didn't do just for Taj, he used it as a vehicle for his drawings. So I'm just gonna kinda come in through here so that we have a, an uneven edge to this, gives it more of a forest look. And you can go back in and add some of these tones so there's a nicer blend between the two. And then I could color this in with whatever I want. If I wanted it more of a daytime scene, I could add flowers or do what I want, but I'm just gonna try to rough in some tones so that we get to see this as more of a landscape. Oh look, frittage where I have a crack in my table. So sometimes it's an unwanted moment, but it still works. And I'm gonna color this in here. And then maybe to add some depth to my green, I'll take a different green and go on a different angle. It's nice if you have some different colors you can sort of blend these together and I'm going to use my blender at the very end. Maybe add some yellows to vary this a little bit, but not too much. And the key is gonna be where we end all of this. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to finish off the sky and we'll be back to see the end result of my Max Ernst landscape using a sage leaf and for Taj. So I worked a little bit more on my landscape and you can see it's a little um, impressionistic, almost surrealistic, but the idea is this should start to look a little like trees and then some growth in the front. So all I'm gonna do now is finish off some of the trunks to show you how you can draw back into your frittage and then we'll be finished. So we have our stems that were already put in with the blue pencil and the green pencil. So I'm just gonna go back in and create more trunk-like shapes by just coloring back over my existing frittage lines. Some of them I do want to have branch out, no pun intended, into um, space, but others I wanna have more defined. So the idea of frittage is you can draw back into it like I'm doing here to kind of give some emphasis of what was going on and maybe even taking some blue into these greens kind of unify my picture a little bit. I like that. I don't like everything just always being one color. It's nice to blend. And drawing some thin little lines as they go up into the top, it'll help make it look a little more like um, 
branches and I just noticed here I forgot to color in a piece and I'm kind of loosely doing this just so you get the idea of what we're trying to achieve here by having some branches and where you might think you need more you don't have to constantly go back and use a sage leaf you can tra trace what you have excuse me and try to get a few more little areas in there and then I just did the sky by using a blender to try to get this back in a little bit um, softer so that there's a definition between the background and the foreground on this. I did not blend the foreground as much because I'm just trying to show that more texturally. Now I will take a pretty dark pencil here and try to emphasize this grass more because this does look more of a, like an evening sort of look to it. And if I wanted to get more depth, I could even take a very dark color, dark neutral. In this case, I have a black pencil and just kind of add some negative space into this little forest that we have going on here, just to try to show the idea that it's a little bit of a, a nighttime experience or an evening. You can go back up in through here, just to give it some oomph. So there we have it. It's a Max Ernst inspired frittage using one little sage leaf and a little imagination. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of Anyone Can Draw, Paint, and Create. Again, we're trying to experiment more with our drawing techniques rather than just how to draw a fill in the blank and try to have some fun along the way with something you might not have thought to do. Of course, painters, you can try this as well by laying things down on top of the paint and then pulling it back off, which is also more of what grattage is, and we're going to see that in next week's lesson. And then we'll be finished with our ages and on to something totally new. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you stay safe and be well this week, Vincent Hall. We're down in the Art Center Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but feel free to try this at home anytime. Remember, all you need is a sheet of computer paper some kind of a leaf or something to color over, and a pencil. Stay safe and be well. See you next time.